Each of these individuals has come to a point in their lives where they have seen that they are <clears throat> sinners before a holy God who demands justice. God, by his nature, by his attributes, by his character, demands justice, which means that sin must be punished. By the grace of God, Jesus Christ, the God-man, was punished in the place of sinners. And each of these individuals has come to that point in their lives where they have seen that, that they're sinners, but that Christ in his mercy has died on the cross for them, being punished in their place, and they have repented of their sin, and they have turned to Christ and trusted him alone for salvation. Jesus said at the end of the Gospel of Matthew that believers, those who have become his followers, his disciples, as a testimony, as a confession of faith, are to be publicly baptized. So what we're doing tonight is having these individuals come into the waters of baptism and tell you their testimony of how they came to faith in Christ. These waters do not save them, and I want to emphasize that. These waters do not save them. This is not the gospel. They are simply publicly confessing their faith already in Christ. I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 where the Apostle Paul said that God did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel. He made a distinction between baptism and the gospel. The gospel is the good news of salvation. Baptism is a confession that these folks have come to Christ. We do this by immersion because we believe that is the correct mode of baptism. So this is a symbol. When these folks go in the water and then come out, it is a picture of them identifying with Christ in his death, burial, and then resurrection, raised to walk in newness of life. So I hope that that is clear to you, this is what baptism is about. Okay, we're gonna start with our first individual. They'll come up here, they'll state their name, and then they will tell you their testimony of how they came to faith, and then I'll baptize them. We also, I must say, we also have several other men who will be baptizing after me. We do that, we, we let uh, leaders in our church, if it's been requested, we let them baptize others. So there will be, I'll do a few and then they'll do some. Hello, my name is John Walker. I'm a sinner saved by God's grace. I used to be an unsaved sinner, and it wasn't fun. The first 40 or so years of my life, I was a good Pharisee. As a child, I was taught that God is everywhere. He sees everything that we do, and he keeps detailed written notes of it, so that when we die, he can decide whether we should go to heaven or hell. Well, I knew I didn't want hell, so I decided I would work as hard as I could to avoid that fate. I would obey the commandments to the best of my ability, and when it came time to give an account of my life, I would tell God that I was there to claim the prize that I had earned. I would boast of my accomplishments. I would tell him that I wasn't perfect, but I was good enough. On occasion, I figured I was doing well enough that I could justifiably pray the Pharisees' prayer thanking God that I was not like the others, the sinners. Despite all the prideful bravado, doubt and fear crept in. What if I got to the judgment and found out that I had been really, really good, but not quite good enough? What if I just barely missed heaven and ended up in hell anyway? Jesus was not a factor in my life at that time because in my warped view, all he did was reopen the lines of communication with God that Adam had severed and gave us the opportunity to earn our salvation by our works. He just opened the door, but we had to do the real work. I was proud and self-righteous, and at the same time I was fearful and uncertain. 
But our gracious, loving God did not leave me in this spiritually dead mess. He sent people and circumstances into my life that he used to work on my blind eyes and my heart of stone. He showed me that he wasn't about making bad people good or good enough, but making dead people alive. He showed me that I was spiritually dead and nothing I could do could make myself alive. He also showed me that Jesus' death was not just the ticket for me to earn my salvation, but that his death was my salvation. He paid the price for my sins, and it was a free gift. Instead of fearfully striving to meet some standard of good behavior that was constantly out of my desperate reach, I could actually get to the judgment after death and plead the shed blood of Jesus and know that I would spend eternity with God. God removed the scales from my eyes. I could not trust myself and any works. God gave me the faith to trust in Jesus' saving death and resurrection. Jesus once asked the apostles if they would leave him, and they responded, where else would we go? Where else could I go? I knew that my way was not the right way. Jesus is the way, the only way. He is the truth and the life. My trust is solely in his saving death and resurrection, and nothing I do can save me. Corporate training has a trust-building exercise where one person stands with his back to a line of co-workers with outstretched arms. The person is instructed to fall backwards, trusting that someone will break his fall and catch him before he hits the floor. God instructed me to repent of my sinful pride and to fall backwards into Jesus' arms. I did, and it has made all the difference. How do I know that I am saved? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Well, whosoever includes me, and I believe in him and only him. Since God saved me and replaced my heart of prideful stone with a new heart, I have joy, a sense of peace, no more anxious striving, no more holier than thou. Life is no longer about avoiding hell because that issue is settled. My eternity is with God. The focus is now on worship, praising God, giving thanks, becoming closer to and more like Jesus through the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful to God for his patient love for the self-righteous sinner that I am. I now look forward to the judgment that I once dreaded, where I can thankfully plead the shed blood of Jesus Christ, my Savior. The judge's gavel will pound down, and God will declare me innocent, washed clean by Jesus' blood. Case closed. Thank you, Jesus. And because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, raised to life. Hello, my name is Olivia Nicely, and I am in sixth grade. I was raised in a Christian family, and I have attended church all my life. About eight years ago, when I was four, my family came to Lakeside. In second grade, I began to attend Awana. I completed all three of the Sparky books during my first year of Awana. Even though I memorized and recited five different verses each night at Awana, these verses did not apply to my life. Just because I can memorize multiple verses, Attend church and, ha and I have parents who are believers. Did it mean that I love Christ and I want to live my life for him? 2 Timothy 3.15 says, From childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ Jesus. Before I was a Christian, I didn't realize my need for Christ, to wash my unrepentant heart. 
Now that Christ is in my heart, I comprehend that I was dead in sin and I needed a savior. My parents and I have conversations about Christ, but not until a year ago did I fully understand why Christ needed to die on the cross for me. One night in the car, my parents were explaining to my sister and I why Christ died, did what Christ did for us and why we needed Christ. I heard that the story of Jesus many times, but did not understand that I was a sinner and the only way my sins would be paid is through Christ Jesus. God placed on my heart many, the many times I disobeyed my parents, was selfish to other people around me, and how I was mean and rude to my sister. When we got home, I thought about the conversation in the car and I wanted to live my life for Jesus instead of in sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I asked my parents to be there with me when I placed my faith in Christ Jesus and my, and as my Lord and Savior. I believe God was calling me into his family. I know I was called into the arms of Jesus because ever since I believed, I wanted to live my life for him. I understand that even though I'm a Christian, I will still sin and make mistakes, but I have Christ who forgave me and will continually guide my path. I try to make the right decisions through Christ Jesus. After I believe that I now enjoy going to church and pr to praise and learn about Jesus, when, who died on the cross to save my sins? When I worship the Lord, my mind is focused on how thankful I am for Jesus. Psalms 96.2 says, Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. I love Jesus and I trust him in everything I do. Jesus lived a perfect life on earth and talked with sinners, cared for sinners, loved sinners, and died for sinners. So what is there not to trust? Olivia, because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My name is Rebecca Edward. When I was little, I was raised in church and I went to Awana for many years. At church and at home, I learned that I needed to repent of my sins and trust Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So when I was five, I repented of my sins and trusted in Jesus, but I didn't really understand about my relationship with him. When I got to second grade, my leaders in Awana taught about hell and the tribulation, and I got scared. I knew I had many sins, such as disobedience to my parents, complaining and lying. I knew that I was really being disobedient to God. I realized that I was a sinner and I wasn't obeying all God told me to do or not to do. I deserved to go to hell, but God had grace on me. I knew now that it, what it meant to trust in Jesus because only he could save me from my sin and help me because I couldn't do it on my own. Romans 6.23 states that for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That verse told me that even though I had sinned and deserved hell, that God gave me a free gift in Jesus Christ. I needed to receive and accept his gift of salvation. Acts 16.31 states, And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. That then told me if I trusted Jesus, I would get to live eternally with him. I prayed to Jesus to forgive my sins, and then I knew now that Jesus was my Savior and Lord for good, and he would always be with me. Since then, I have learned that you need to, when you need help, you should pray and ask for his help, and he will guide you. Today, I'm, I'm trying to strengthen my relationship with Christ by studying his word, memorizing verses, and going to church and Bible study fellowship so I can go stronger in my faith. God has changed my life, and now I know I belong to him. Rebecca, because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Aiden Cooper, and this is my testimony. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will keep your path straight. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is my favorite Bible verse. For my third or fourth birthday, I got a pillow with the verse on it. That's when it truly became my favorite verse because it just kind of stuck with me. Back then, I didn't really know much about God. Sure, I knew about Noah and the animals and Jesus walking on water, but I didn't know a lot more. When I went to church and I had a lot of friends and loved my teachers, but then in first grade, my family came here to Lakeside to try it out. I started to see the light about coming a genuine believer in Awana. It was second grade by now, but I had learned another verse that I remember all my life. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Then I realized how bad I had lived. I had fought with my sister, I lied to my parents. I had to change. Then I listened to Pastor Kreloff's sermon series on Revelation and that really freaked me out. So I went home. So I went home after Awana one night and prayed to make the Lord my savior. Today is the day for salvation, James says, and that day was my day. But as I went through my days, I realized that I wasn't making many changes. I was still fighting with my sister, lying to my parents, etc. I then prayed again because I doubted whether I was a Christian. I don't know what I was looking for. But then I thought, I need to truly repent and change my behavior. But I still believe that that night in second grade was when I was truly saved. So I still need to work on my behavior, but I am hoping, and I am, growing in my faith. Middle school is bringing new opportunities and challenges for me, like participating in fellowship of Christian athletes and speaking about God to my friends who are atheists. This helps me grow in my faith and helps me understand the faith better. I need Christ, so therefore I came to Christ for my needs. Baptism is the imagery of our salvation, but it is crucial to our salvation because it is in the Bible that we must do it. Jesus has saved us from the murky depths of our sins but I still have a long path before me battling sin. I have to not give in to sin, but the Lord has saved me from sin and death. Thank you, Lord. And because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Raise Good evening, my name is Elizabeth Simano and I have been attending Lakeside for my whole life. My parents have always taught my brother and I about the word of God ever since we were little and they have always encouraged us to obey the Lord and to be in his word daily. As a young girl, I tried my best to pray, memorize scripture, and participate during church. However, I didn't fully grasp what it meant to be a true believer. As the years went by, I kept living the same exact way I did when I was younger. Even though I was being taught at my youth group and church, I constantly struggled with sin, such as having a bad, bad attitude towards my parents, being deceitful, and being terribly influenced by people at school. I had absolutely no desire, I had absolutely no desire to be in the Word. I was still caught up in my dreadful sin, and I knew that I had not yet come to faith in Christ. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. One Wednesday evening on September 1st before a youth group, my youth leaders decided to take a short break from studying the word to share testimonies about how we came to faith in Christ. When I heard her say this, I was very nervous because deep down I knew I wasn't a believer. Reluctantly, when it was my turn to share, I talked about how I thought I was saved just to make myself appear like the other girls in the class. Later that night, when I got home from youth group, I felt very bad about being dishonest to my youth leader and friends who were there that day. 
I was so miserable just thinking about this and how I wish I could turn back time and share what was really in my heart. Also, I was thinking about how good it was if I really did come to faith in Christ. I desperately wanted to change my heart, repent of my wicked sins, and follow the Lord. Right then and there, I decided to turn away from my sin and live for Christ no matter what the cost and no matter what others thought of me. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Because the Lord saved me, I have a desire to be in his word and to learn more about him. I am so thankful to the Lord for saving me, and I am so thankful to my parents for teaching me about the Lord since I was very young. I continue to praise the Lord that I am no longer a slave to sin and that I am his forever. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Elizabeth, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm going to be followed now by some men who will baptize individuals who they have uh, had a profound impact on, and these individuals have requested that these, and we do this with, with leaders, official and unofficial leaders in our church can baptize others. And so I'm going to turn things over now to Bob Carver, okay? Hi, my name is Madison Kellogg. I have grown up and lived in a Christian home my entire life, but that does not mean I'm automatically saved. I remember asking God to come into my life at a varying age, around three or four, but I don't think that I completely understood the whole concept of it. I did it because I had heard a lot about Bible, a lot about the Bible and God from church and home. <clears throat> as I got as I got older, I started hearing more and more about hell and that all sinners, including myself would go there if they did not become a Christian, and that got my attention. I remember starting to think more on that subject and that if I'm not a Christian for sure, I would not go to heaven. It was a little later that I finally hit me that I was a sinner in need of a savior, and I could only go to heaven through Jesus Christ. I needed him in my life more than just the reason of living with God in heaven. I accepted him into my life and tried my best to let him take control of my life. Not only after that did I have no doubts about my future, but I knew that through my repentance and faith in God, I could let him lead me through my life. Psalm 9111 says, May the Lord give his angels charge over you to guide you in all your ways. It took some time, but I found myself more often praying at school before a test and other struggles that came into my life. Over the past few years, I've been through a few very testing struggles, but repeatedly I see God help me through them and make me stronger each and every time. I hope that this experience with getting baptized will not only help me to realize how blessed I am to have God in my life, but also that I have a greater love for him and those around me. Madison, because of your public profession, faith in Christ alone as your Savior and your Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, raised to walk in the midst of life. Hi, my name is Jack Tuttle. When I was going into the sixth grade, I started youth group at St. Paul United Methodist because that was where my sister was going and also a lot of people I knew were there. The first summer I was there, they were going to a camp called TVR and I began to get really excited because of all the games 
and fun we were going to have. I realized that this place is something more than just playing games and having fun. I went through the week learning more and more about God and what life was like for others before and after being saved by God. This really hit me hard, but I still had no clue where my life was headed. After the week was over, I got home and thought I was saved, but still was completely dead in sin. I had fallen deeper into sin and started to watch pornography. I realized what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't want anything to fix it. I went through a whole school year feeling the same way I did the last year. I went to TVR the next summer, but the same thing had happened. I changed my ways for a short time, but eventually fell back into the same sin. I still had not confessed my sin to the Lord and still felt completely lost. The pull was stronger to turn from sin, but I didn't care about the sin I was committing and still felt that God was just there to help me when times get hard. I went back to TVR with St. Paul for a third time and my, met my counselor, Aaron Bass. On the first night there, he started to ask us what our main struggles were. When nobody answered, he started to give his testimony and I just sat there crying because his testimony was a lot like what I was struggling with. Aaron then asked again and I told him and others in the cabin that I struggled with pornography. I sat there bawling my eyes out, feeling so, so shameful of what I had done. I then repented before the Lord with an open heart and decided to follow him with everything I had. Aaron approached me the next night about some verses that helped him with his struggles. Two of the verses he gave me were 1 Corinthians 5.11 and Colossians 3.5-8, through 8, because they were about being sexually immoral and talking with a bad mouth. These verses are very important to me because they, were, they are the first verses I was truly affected by and the first time anyone had talked to me about my personal struggles. That was the turning point in my life. I remember a few months after, I could truly see a change in my life and I could see that God had saved me. Here I am today, two years later, still knowing the exact events that took place on that summer night. I still think about that night when I questioned my salvation and questioned Him. I still struggle time, from time to time, but not nearly as much as I used to. The difference is, I know when I sin and know when I need help with my temptations. At one point, I asked myself, where do I go from here? I prayed, thought, and read about what I should do because I knew that God would answer me in one way or another. God answered my prayers in calling me to become a counselor at TVR and a teacher of the word so that I can spread his message and help other boys with the same struggles I did. I am now at Lakeside Community Chapel and Lakeside Christian School. It has been a huge blessing in my life to have people that truly care about me as a person and people that can help me grow in my faith. I was asked to be on chapel team by my youth pastor, Spencer King, and I joyfully accepted. This school year has been very different than others. I struggled a lot with grades at the beginning of the year, having, having almost all failing grades. Since then, God has put another man in my life, Dan Thayer, and he has helped me a ton when I get upset with my parents, getting schoolwork done, and also being consistent in, in my daily life. There was a day last year that I was very upset and angry with my parents, and I wrote, them a, I wrote a letter to them saying that they don't deserve my respect. Since then, I have confessed that I responded wrong, and Dan has helped me a lot with waking up and becoming a stronger leader at school. I also struggled to always respond out of love towards my parents when they disciplined me. Since the argument with my parents, I've grown a lot in my faith. We are very honest with each other and admit when we are wrong, when we are in the wrong. In Colossians 3.20, it says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. I thank God every day for my parents, even when I feel that they have made a mistake. Without them, I wouldn't be who I am today. I'm on chapel team at school with 300 kids, K through 12, and it's been a great place to start teaching the word and evangelizing to a few younger and a few older kids. It has been a great place to grow in my faith. Jack, it gives me great pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. assumes since I grew up in a Christian family that I was a Christian. One day my sister told me that I had to pray to become a Christian. 
and that salvation was a gift from God. She led me in prayer, and I began to understood what, understand what being a Christian actually was. One day in fifth grade, I realized I wasn't living like a Christian, and I wasn't sure if I was saved because I wasn't doing the things a Christian should be doing. So I prayed that Jesus would save me from my sins. Now I know I'm saved because since that time I have enjoyed learning about God and how God has saved us and who Jesus is. I read the Bible regularly and I like coming to church and I enjoy reading books about the Bible. I really enjoyed the book chosen by God. God has worked in my life and convicted me of sins and helped me repent. All right. Ben, because of your faith in, the, in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rise to walk in the name of God. So that concludes our baptisms for this evening. Uh, please pray with me, and then we'll be dismissed. Dear Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the privilege of of hearing these messages of the miracles that you have done in the lives of these young and older people. And Lord, we pray that that we would have the desire to uh, preach the gospel to those we come in contact with, that that we can be used by you to declare your truth as you you turn people to yourself and bring dead people to life. And Lord, we pray that uh, these people who were baptized today, that, that they will continue to act in obedience to, to you and that they will live lives that are characterized by being followers of Jesus Christ when times are good and also when times are hard. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you that you are alive and in control. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm.